Well, I'm with Barry Embling here, who's site manager for the Woodland Trust for South East Wales. And Barry's going to talk to me a little bit about the wider forestry issues, but also a little bit about the area we're in here, which is the, it's called the Punch Bowl, very near Abergavenny, up on the mountain here called the Blorange. Barry, it looks man-made to me, this great sort of scallop bite <laughs> out of the hillside. Um, is it really? Is no, it, sort of quarry? It, it, it does look like a quarry, doesn't it? Um, it's got a very vertical, um, a very vertical face on this part, this part of the, of the Blorange, um, and of course the reason for that um, is really just natural a natural landform. But it has meant that the trees have survived, hence the Woodland Trust being here with a reserve. Um, otherwise, if the sheep could have got on it, got on it, um, it would be sheep pasture historically. Nice. So here we are with actually one of the highest beech um, woodlands in its natural range, right on the edge of its natural range, both altitudinally and um, in, in, within Wales. OK, well, that's interesting. So this is why the Woodland Trust is here. It's also special about these beech woods. I mean, are they, are they quite rare in the Brecon Beacons? Here? Yes, I mean, because of historical land use, we haven't really got many um, beech forests um, or beech woods in, in, uh, in Wales and very few that are th this high up, um, just through pressures of land management through the centuries, really. And are there any particular species that visitors here would expect to find in the beech woods here? Or is it more you're preserving it for the... the I mean, the woods are... We'll have a look at some of the trees in a bit, and they're lovely in their own right. But is there anything else that you're protecting here? Um, it's not designated as a site of special scientific interest or anything like that. Um, but the the phenomenon of a of a of a uniform beech woodland is in it, in itself quite unusual. Um, we do have quite a lot of specialist birds nesting here. Um, we've got a pair of ravens on the on the on the face here, as you as you often do on cliff faces, um, and things like red starts. Um, and wood warblers, those kinds of typical western oak wood species that you can see that do occur here in the beach. Yeah, well they're absolutely fantastic birds and probably beginning to think about heading back. It's all, it's all a bit, it being August now, they're probably thinking of home in Africa rather than having... They, they are. They've, they've just finished bringing up their young um, and they've obviously stopped singing about a month ago and now they're busy molting, which means they're having to put all their energy into making new feathers and they're lying low because they're quite vulnerable to predators when they're molting. So, so they're still here? They're still here, ah, but, but very yeah. quiet. That's yeah. why I haven't seen them for yeah. six weeks or so. Yeah. yeah. And what can you tell me about the, this, well, should we call it a lake? It's a large pond? Yes, I guess, a... I guess it is a lake. It's actually a man-made uh, reservoir. Um, I think in the 19th century uh, there was a, a causeway built which impeded the flow um, out of the valley um, and it's indeed f filled up. Well, it's yeah. a rather beautiful spot and uh, must be a great place to come as a place of work. Yeah, very. it is. Um, it's a very, it's a wonderful place to come for everybody including fishermen that um, shouldn't be here. Right. Um, we don't really want fishing here. Um, fishermen often leave tackle behind and you know, cause quite a lot of problems and it's quite a remote spot for us to manage it effectively. Yeah. So we, we do ask people not to come fishing here and people still come fishing here and there's quite a lot of conflicts with fires and people taking firewood from the neighbours and things so they can have fires here. So, um, oh, site, so campsite. Yeah. yes, it's quite a lot of work for the Woodland Trust having sites like this that would take quite a lot of resource. We have somebody coming in here litter picking every week to try and minimise the impact every visually. Week. Uh, certainly through the summer, yeah, just through the summer. We know with readers that's one of the, and many of our contributors litter in the countryside is one of the big big issues yes why don't people take their litter home mm. them? they come to a beautiful place and they leave bottles yeah. and things yeah. yeah indeed extraordinary mm. well as for the fishermen i've only seen tiny roach in this in this pond so it's not an awful lot of it <laughs> bring all your tackle up well here. they probably they probably bring their fish as well we oh. don't and we, yeah <laughs> and we don't really know what's in here of course oh, well, mysteries mysteries <laughs> monsters of the of the punch bowl <laughs> We also do uh, bracken control. Um, you can now now no longer use chemicals to control Are bracken. Are banned Azuland? Yeah, yes, that's just recently banned. I think there's just a few people can use it if they had if they had some over. Um, so we do actually use uh, use um, horses to to roll the bracken and rolling the bracken and mechanical rolling is an alternative to using chemical. And um, unfortunately, not here today, uh, yeah. but just a week or two ago, we had somebody here with a horse ro rolling it. And what does that do? Is it presumably a large roller that they pull along? Is that That's right, yeah. yes. And, and how does that, because this looks pretty robust, this bracken. Yeah, um, I, I, think, I just think it has the effect of, uh, of, not, of not, breaking, not breaking the stems in the way that strimming would or cutting with a topper would. Um, and that uh, ha has, an, has an effect on, uh, on weakening, weakening the plant over a sort of protracted period of time. And, and um, I think um, 
uh, that bruising uh, means there's less energy stored in the roots over the winter and then and there's a weakening effect over time but it's 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 you know it's 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 expensive and it's you hard, know you have to be perse labor. persevere yeah. with it yeah and mm. is the bracken a big big issue what's what's the problem with it i mean it, obviously i can see mm. it's claustrophobic yeah in the way it covers the footpaths swamps the land and so farmland is lost is it bad for wildlife um oh no it's not bad for wildlife um in in so long as it isn't covering, you know, uh, you know, large areas, it does seem to have the effect of, uh, of, of, of of delaying natural tree regeneration in a way that very few other plants seem to. I think it forms a very a very deep thatch, which is which I think if a tree seed were to fall into that deep thatch, it dries out very quickly. So there's a quite a lot of you know you, there's not successful germination within these large stands of bracken. So bracken's a problem for that reason. Um, as for the reason for bracken being such a problem in the sort of a phenomenon in, in the modern day world, I I don't suppose we really knew much about it in the past and where it grew, but people aren't really harvesting it anymore. There's a lot less people on the they land. Used it for bedding, is that right? for I, animal bedding? I, I think I, yeah. I believe so. Yes, I mean so I have seen people do that even even now, but very but very few people. Um, and we, are, we have also in the 20th century, um, in the last century now, had a lot of sheep on the land. Mm. Um, and it might be through that overgrazing um, that, you, that you end up creating conditions where the bracken then, then does very well because of, because of just such consistent overgrazing over a long period Everything of time. Everything else has been eaten out of competition. Yes, yes. So, and you can often see it in Wales, that you know, hills that ha once had heather on 50 years ago are now, are now, are now uniform bracken. Um, so it, it, it is a modern problem. Of course, it's, of course, it's a modern problem throughout the world. The, the exactly the same species in, in the Amazon basin where there's been clear felling, and New Zealand. It's it's everywhere. Gosh, it's like a, it's like a triffid. Yeah. What will we do? <laughs> <laughs> That's dense forestry to me, mm. um, which is not my favourite wildlife habitat. In fact, a lot of people would say, not a lot of wildlife, goshawks though, might be one of the sort of big, exciting species to live there. Yeah, there are, there are a suite of species that have come in off the back of forestry, um, bird species, things like siskin and um, goshawk and firecrest. Yes. And of course, night jars when clear fells take place. Um, but um, a lot of, um, I think the most negative forestry plantations um, are on ancient woodland sites and the, the, the Woodland Trust have, um, have procured a lot of ancient woodland sites to restore um, back to native woodland um, and we are gradually removing uh, the, the exotic conifers um, and that's where we're, we're really prioritising um, our efforts and that's where um, the monoculture of, of, of commercial forestry, you know, that's really bad planting. Right, when they've, um, they've taken something that's taken hundreds if not thousands of years to develop, yeah. whacked it down, planted these fast-growing yeah. commercial crop, mm. and can it be restored? The um, the yes, it can. Um, they're, they're, they're incredibly robust. Um, you know, re re ancient woodland relics, the specialist plants, um, you know, for example, can, you know, can just, just hold on. And um, through gradual removal, they, they will recolonize. Um, it has to be done gradually. You have to maintain that shading um, in order that the, um, they're not competing with, with um, sort of ruderal plants and um, things like bramble, that, you know, very rampant and um, cast a lot of shade and will, will often destroy um, just the little, little few features you've got left by, by clear felling. Right. Um, so it's our policy not to clear fell. Um, and to do it gradually, and we, you know, we encourage other landowners to do the same, and some are taking that up. Okay, well that sounds very encouraging, because you sound a lot more positive about these forests as well, when they're well, when they're well planted. Yes, indeed. I mean, in the uplands of uh, Wales, I mean, um, you only got to live here to appreciate that they're important to our local economy. Mm. Um, the unfortunate thing, of course, is it's a, a global market, and our woodland commodity prices, wood commodity prices are still quite low in the UK. Um, and on, on a site like this, it's very steep, this mm. plantation that's on this hillside. Um, by the time the contractors met the expense of going out, going and getting this timber and getting it to the roadside and getting it carted to the uh, timber mill, um, 
put that against the, the value of the wood and it's, it's a barely a very worthwhile exercise. So it's a bit of a negative thing at the beginning when they planted them and at the end when they can't really afford to take it off profitably. Ah, okay, so we have to wait for the price of wood to rise a little bit and then maybe we'll see a few more of these monocultures, I'd call them. <laughs> but maybe we'll see a few more of them being chopped down and uh, maybe a return to more varied looks. Uh, yes, uh, certainly the uh, uh, organisations like the Natural, Natural Resources Wales um, you know, are, are looking to plant um, in a, in a, with a lot more diversity. They're retaining broad leaves that, that are you know, remaining after the, after the conifers have been removed. And, and on, on the ancient woodland sites, they, they have their own policy to, to thin rather than clear fell. Um, so, yes. So there is some form of clear filling policy in Wales, um, and that is to do with disease. That's right. Um, at the moment, there's a lot of uh, preventative felling um, of larch uh, in, in the UK, not just Wales, uh, because of a, an infectious um, pathogenic disease called um, Phytophthora remorum. And this is, well, this is going to devastate our larch trees. It's it looks like it's going to devastate our larch trees. Yes, certainly in the where there's monoculture stands and they're in proximity to each other. Yeah. Now, some people might not look on that. Well, you know, getting rid of some of these dense conifer stands and opening them up for some people might be a good thing. But it's we're actually going to be taking preventative measures to stop that. That stop that disease spreading anyway. Well, where there are where there are infections that are identified, um, the Welsh government, you know, in Wales, are, are serving plant health orders uh, in a in an attempt to try and you know restrict its spread. Um, but I th I think really we can expect it to, to to spread everywhere, which is a shame because there are quite a lot of <laughs> threats to our trees, our tree health in the countryside at the moment, and really for the forestry industry, uh, an ever diminishing. Um, or suite of trees that, that can actually be used for, for, for growing timber and the, the larch is a big big loss to, um, to the timber industry and, it, and it's also probably the most wildlife friendly of all of the conifers because it loses its needles in the winter and um, you know it's, it's you know the tree of choice for the nesting goshawk for example yes. and, uh, and, and, and obviously beautiful autumn colour with, that, with the yellow that you can see of the needles going yellow so it's a, it's a shame we're losing losing a larch to, the, to Britain. A lament for the larch, I, I um, converted okay to larches <laughs> now you might get over the, um, our shoulders here there is a patch of conifer woodland and there's a paler patch in the middle which Barry has pointed out to me is, um, is larch actually. So in, if we came up here in a couple of months time that would look quite golden I suppose. Quite beautiful, yeah. yes. And the, the larger trees around, darker, greener, uh, are Douglas fir. That, they look yeah. like Douglas fir from here, yes. Right. And they, they are less attractive in autumn. They just stay the same. They just right? stay the same, yeah. yes, they do. Yeah. Unchanging. Yeah. And, uh, um, so we can expect to see some gaps in our larch plantations. But what about um, the, really, the really big one is uh, ash dieback. And there are a lot of ashes on the hillside here. Um, has, has ash dieback been found in this part of Wales yet, or in it, Wales at all? Uh, yes, it has. It's been found in quite a few places, um, and it's sort of becoming more evident, really, that the um, that Kalara has probably pro probably been certainly in the wider UK, been in been in the countryside for a number of years. Right. Um, it looks as though it's going probably going to take a, um, perhaps decades to reach every ash tree in every corner of the UK, um, which is going to be devastating. I mean. You know, the the the, the 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 large issue is is nothing like the issue we've got with with Kalara. Um, you know, I think on the continent there's been you know in the high 90 90s percent of of death. She's gone. Yeah. Now I have a lot of ash trees in my garden, as a and I'm sure a lot of readers have an ash tree or several ash trees. You can find out how to identify Kalara on the web, but yeah. what would I do with a tree that has ash dieback? Um, well, at this stage, um, the, the, the advice is to do nothing. Um, the thinking there is that if we were to do any pre preventative felling, um, we may actually be felling the trees that do indeed show resistance to Kalara, which a very small percentage are likely to, uh, if, if the continent is anything to go by. 
Um, so at the moment, it's, it's wait, waiting for those symptom, symptoms to come through. Um, to answer your question, once something has got cholera and is, uh, I, th I think, think the decline, certainly on the bigger trees, the decline is quite gradual. Um, and eventually, of course, for health and safety reasons, that they'll they'll need to be need, need to be to need to be removed. Mm. And can we use it as firewood? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I, okay. So there is I'm a sure, byproduct, yes. but uh, just a desperate shame to lose such an incredible shame. Um, yeah. Perhaps not such a shame where we are now, but you've only got to go um, places like the Lantoni Valley or mm. Teesside, some of these upland places in the UK where the ash is practically the only tree often heavily grazed areas, um, it makes you wonder if there's ever going to be um, that kind of tree cover again once the ash trees have gone. Gosh, that's quite a uh, sort of doom-laden scenario. Afraid so, yeah. yeah. Um, that of, of, of course, there, there, is, there is work going on to find, find resist, resistant strains, um, but of course the ash tree is a very free seeding tree and um, yeah, what the future holds will have to, you know, remains to be seen. Yes, because there are individual elm trees or several elm trees in these woods, which I've been surprised to find. I mean, perhaps beyond the borders of the, the Woodland Trust Reserve, but in the woods around my house, which is not far away that way, I've, I've been amazed to find elm trees. Now, I thought there were no elm trees left in Britain, apart from a few resistant, or a few little hedgerows with throwing up suckers occasionally because of Dutch elm disease. Now, these are survivors or...? Yeah, I, th I thought exactly the same thing because I, I'm from lowland England, from the Thames Valley, and that's what's happened to all our elm trees. They've all gone, apart from these suckering hedges, and they get to a certain size, get the beetle, which is carry carrying the fungus, and they die again. It seems like in Wales we've got quite a number of big specimens left that, that perhaps um, are isolated, perhaps, perhaps, it's diff perhaps the beetles have never been able to reach them um, and now the beetle numbers are probably quite low as a result of all the accessible trees having been infected. Um, yeah, the, these, these trees are just surviving, although I have found one or two that have subsequently got infected, so um, they don't always get away with it, but as you say, a lot have. Yes. Yeah. Well, come, come to Wales to see elms, Indeed, um, which yeah. is a great delight for me, having never really seen them in my adult life.